Hello, welcome all to my channel. Today, we are going to discuss data abstraction in DPMS. For the previous lecture, we know that what is the DPMS, what is its advantages over a traditional file processing system. DPMS is nothing but collection of relevant data. We are arranging, we are storing it in a particular manner. What kind of in a data we are using, how it is going to be stored, all these kind of the parameters we are going to be considered while designing the database. Database systems are usually made up of complex data structure as per the requirement. So to make it easier, one concept is used called as a view of a data in the TBMS. With the help of this concept, we will be just able to realize that how the data is stored in a DBMS. Also, which kind of in a data and in which structure that data is stored. That means, is there any kind of in a table is used? Then what are the fields are there in a table? How or what kind of in a data you are using? How much size it is going to be occupied? for storing that particular data. All these parameters we will be get with the help of view of data. But when we are just carrying out this, uh, uh, this uh, implementing this concept, it is carried out with the help of uh, two processes. One is called as uh, data abstraction and another one is called as uh, schemas and instances. So for today's session, we are just seeing that what is data abstraction. So important word over here, it is an abstraction. Abstraction means we are just going to be filtering it. We are providing a particular meaning or we are going to be removing the unwanted from the wanted one. That is nothing but called as an abstraction. The same meaning we can be implemented in a PBMS also. The abstraction is one of the main feature of the database system. Why it is required? So for explaining that need, I, I'm going to be just taken out one example in our day to day like that. For example, uh, we are just uh, trying to drive a car. So there are the within a car, there is a clutch. Then we can say the uh, accelerator and a brake. So as a common person, I am totally not interested to get the knowledge that what happens when a clutch is pressed on? What is the connection of that clutch within a gearbox? Or when I'm just taking out the, uh, pressing the clutch and then what happens when the gear is at the first position, second position and so on. As a common person, I'm totally, don't, I'm not interested within all this process. I'm just saying that if when you have to move further, you have to be first of all press the clutch and then you can be change the gear. That's it. So we have to represent the data to the front user as per the requirement. If any of the technical person is working on that, obviously you can be tech about the all these things. So that is the same process we are using in the data abstraction. Or you can see one another example that when we are just opening our Gmail, there are the n number of tabs. Gmail providing you the different kinds of a feature that is um, receiving the mail, sending the mail. We are providing the different feature while we are sending the mail, etc. But as an, a common person, what it is required, it, it is just concentrating only on what, how to send the mail, how to receive the mail. But what actually happens on the back end, what are the modules used, what are the pages are in linking over there. As an, a common person, we are totally not interested over that. The same thing can be happen while we are using the any kind of an DBMS. So for the for example, if I'm just creating a database for the banking system, then as an account holder, I just want the information about what is the balance, what are the transaction is carried out. That is only how it is going to be carried out at an a back end side. That is totally not important as an a user. So hiding all this. Presenting 
the important data as per the requirement of the user by hiding irrelevant or unwanted data is nothing but called as data abstraction. To make the user interaction very easily with a database, the internal irrelevant details can be hidden from the user. This process of hiding irrelevant details from the user is nothing but called as abstraction. So that just mentioned over here, hiding irrelevant details from the user and providing abstract or only required data view of the data to the user. It helps in an easy and efficient user database interaction. Extracting the important data by ignoring the remaining irrelevant data is nothing but called as an abstraction. So what is the main purpose? In short, we can say that providing only that much data which is required by hiding unwanted data is nothing but the main use of the data abstraction. With that, the relationship or the interaction with a DBMS will be carried out very smoothly. How it is going to be carried out? And what are the levels of the data abstraction that we are going to be chasing for the next lecture? Thank you.